Welcome to Erisim Gaming. I'm Rush, and this is a look at Pursuit Curves flying the P-51 in DCS against Focke-Wulf 190s. I uh, wanted to do this video after watching some footage of three engagements I recorded in the Dogs of War server in a single flight. It's a post-commentary, and uh, I'll talk through the engagements and the mistakes I make, uh, and of course we'll talk about Pursuit Curves a fair bit. So what is a pursuit curve? Well, pursuit curve can basically be described as uh, where you position your aircraft relative to your opponents in a dogfight. There are three types of pursuit curves, pure, lead, and lag. And we'll just quickly have a look at those now and talk about them in depth further in the video. The first one we'll look at here is where I'm chasing my opponent and I'm directly at his tail with the velocity vector of my aircraft pointing at his. And the simplest way to think of a velocity vector is where the nose of the aircraft is pointing. So we can see this is the simplest to define. It's just simply that I'm pointing the nose of my aircraft at my enemy. The next is lag pursuit. And lag pursuit is quite simply that the nose of my aircraft is not pointing at my opponent and that our paths will never meet. The last one is lead pursuit. And lead pursuit is uh, simply defined as the nose or the velocity vector of your aircraft pointing ahead of your enemy. So when I say velocity vector, I am simplifying it for this video, where a real velocity vector um, takes into account a whole heap of other flying parameters um, to actually calculate it. Uh, so for this video, I've just got a, a nifty little uh, indicator in the bottom right of the screen here, which will just show the approximate um, uh, pursuit curve I'm in at any one time. It is a little bit of an estimation, but it's a good thing to, to have a look at and to note during these fight sequences. A good thing to note is to just see how much time I spend in each of the curves through each of the individual uh, engagements. Now, originally I didn't understand pursuit curves correctly. I, I assumed it was defined by the position of your aircraft relative to the opponent's. So here I assumed I was in lead pursuit because I'm above him. And if you were, say, below and behind an aircraft, you were in a lag pursuit. However, that's not really the case. I can actually be below and behind an enemy uh, in a lag pursuit type environment, but I'll actually be running lead. And at the top of that climb there, you can see I completely stuffed up that, uh, that slight rotation that I had. Really, uh, I wasn't able to use the rudder in that hammerhead, so uh, it really was an ugly uh, over-the-top loop there. So let's have a look at what a lead pursuit really is. Uh, a, a lead pursuit is having your aircraft's nose ahead of who you're attacking. And this can be in vertical or horizontal turns, it doesn't really matter. Uh, lead pursuit is to close the distance between you and your enemy. Uh, I can do this by either cutting the turn, like I am here, uh, outturning my opponent through rate of turn, or using the excess speed I have to just simply close the gap. But the thing to note here is, lead pursuit should be thought of as an energy decreasing maneuver, or at least I'm not going to gain any energy by being in a lead pursuit position. Uh, to maintain my nose ahead of the enemy, I have to be inside their turn. So what this means is it leaves me vulnerable. If there's anyone, if there's anyone helping this guy here, uh, I'd be um, in a lot of trouble here because uh, I never regain any of my energy. We can see there I'm at 150 mile an hour, and that's why I'm forced to drop into this lag pursuit position here. I'm still on this guy's tail but I've allowed the nose of my aircraft to drop below his to regain some energy. And we can see the distance has really opened up. But as I've recovered more energy than he did through his maneuvers, I'm now able to pull lead. And the reason I'm able to recover more energy uh, through uh, pulling a lag pursuit there is a difference in the aircraft, where the Mustang retains more energy when pulling G compared to the Dora. Now, and you'll see that in any um, turn fight you've ever been in, a Dora is as soon as a Dora starts pulling G, it bleeds energy really, really quickly. So in the Mustang, I'm just flying to my advantage, which is a better energy retention. However, as you can see from these fights, I haven't really used the energy retention of the Mustang to great effect. It's in the third fight um, that'll just come up later in the video where I really show uh, how lag pursuit can be used better. And well, just a comment uh, about this fight here is my trigger control. As you can see, it's been pretty poor. I get a little bit frustrated and waste far too much ammunition there. 
Okay, well, let's talk about pursuit. Uh, the pure pursuit. Why we're here is a pure pursuit is uh, basically putting your nose directly on the target. Now, don't get that confused with lead. Running a pure pursuit does not mean you can get guns on target. If I'm pulling anything more above, if I'm pulling anything above 1G, I have to have lead on the target for my guns to actually hit. And to quote Captain Hans Marcel, as I look right into the muzzles, nothing can happen to me. Only if he pulls lead am I in danger. So why would I use pure pursuit? Well, pure pursuit I would use in the Mustang is if I came screaming down from a high altitude and a great energy advantage on my opponent. Pure Pursuit offers the least visibility for the uh, target you're attacking. If he looks out his tail, you're going to be very hard to see. You're going to be right in his blind spot, but you're also going to be closing. But the difference between Pure and Lead Pursuit is basically categorised that uh, the closure rate is diminished. In Pure Pursuit mode, I am relying on my energy advantage of my opponent. So if I have no energy advantage on my opponent, the distance between me and them should never decrease. Uh, of course there's differences with uh, engine horsepower and stuff like that. So in this case if the door was flying to its advantage, i.e. using its horsepower, and I was in a pure pursuit, well it would just pull ahead of me and the distance, uh, the closing rate of my aircraft would actually go negative and he would actually just start flying away from me. So when would I use a pure pursuit curve? I'd use a pure pursuit curve is if I was in a state where I didn't want to lose or gain any energy, where I was happy with the airspeed that I have and I was happy with the closure rate I have on my enemy. So primarily the situation that it'd be would be long distance uh, engagements where I'm trying to reduce uh, the distance between me and my opponent. In an actual turn battle, uh, it's really not that much use being in pure pursuit mode. But we'll see that in this next fight that's coming up here. And the situation that would call for this is if I was engaging a target that was a significant distance away from me, where I wasn't able to pull any lead uh, because of the, the distance between us, of course. But this would only work is if the enemy was continually flying away from me and wasn't actually engaging me in a turning battle. And as soon as a turning battle does start, then I'm purely relying on the difference between the performance of my aircraft and his. So if my aircraft has a higher performance than uh, the enemy's aircraft, then the distance between me and him will decrease while in a pure pursuit curve. So the final fight that we have in this video here was uh, I chased this guy down on quite a long distance in a pure pursuit curve. He was flying away from me chasing my wingman and it's about now my wingman starts maneuvering and slowing him down. So I enter this fight with quite an energy advantage on my opponent which means it's now time to talk about what lag pursuit is. So lag pursuit is when the velocity vector of my aircraft is below my enemies. So let's say my enemy was in a 45 degree climb and I maintained my nose level at the horizon, then I am in a lag pursuit. And here as I engage this target we can see I'm, in quite, I'm pulling a, quite a lot of lead on the guy. And it's about now I drop back into lag pursuit. While in a lag pursuit I'm allowing my aircraft to regain some energy as I'm not having to hold my nose on my opponent and follow him through his turns. Now here's really interesting, I really should have died here. Uh, as this guy gets an amazing snapshot off at me and if I was hit by a cannon I would have lost a wing. Check this out. Absolutely crazy. But anyway, we follow him down out of this loop and here is where I really use lag pursuit to regain a lot of energy. Whereas now I could be pulling to put my nose on the opponent, but instead I allow my nose to drop. And what you'll notice is the closing rate between me and the enemy completely goes negative. He pulls uh, a lot of distance away from me. However, because of that extra energy that I regained, I was able to catch my opponent at the top of his loop. And you can see I've got some good hits on him there. But again, after the loop, uh, at the top of that loop that we were just at there, is I don't follow the Fock Wolf into the, um, the pull into the second loop. I allow my nose to drop, I regain some energy, and then I follow him back into the loop. And this is just using the strengths of the Mustang, where the Mustang is great at holding energy, 
but it's not very good at picking energy up. And this is purely because of the uh, horsepower to weight ratio. So what's the disadvantage of being in a lag uh, pursuit situation? Well, there's a lot. For one, I'm not in an attacking position. For when I'm in a lag pursuit, my guns are nowhere near the target and I'm not going to hit him. The second uh, disadvantage here is it's predictable. If an opponent looks uh, behind himself and sees that I've dropped into a lag position, well, he, he can quite easily uh, start out turning me with a few simple manoeuvres uh, which would easily throw me off his tail, just something simple like a split S. So typically being in a lag pursuit uh, situation is only temporary, but being there temporarily allows you to get uh, into a kill situation where I can pull lead and get my guns on the target. But there are very many advantages, and the main one, especially in the Mustang, is energy retention. And as we can see in this fight versus the other two that I had in the Furball, this fight I have much more energy than my opponent, and I retain it throughout the flight. But when I disengage uh, my opponent here, I'm at over 300 mile an hour at the bottom of the loop. Compared to the other two fights where I was in the Furball, where at times I was as low as 150 mile an hour. And that just plays into, if there was anyone else on my tail with those other two aircraft, I should have been shot down. And that's really why I made this video, is after uh, looking at the footage from this uh, flight here, uh, I really noticed that it was a difference in how I flew in uh, each of the battles. And uh, it really got me thinking as to how to fly the Mustang a little bit better against the Dora. And I didn't notice uh, that I wasn't using lag, uh, lag to shoot enough. So I really just wanted to highlight that. And it is a, a simple concept to get, like where am I positioning my aircraft? Am I uh, in lead, lag, or pure? These are things you're not really uh, thinking about at the actual time. Um, but to effectively use the Mustang, the things, uh, the, these different pursuit curves are something you have to be aware of, uh, especially when it comes to fighting an aircraft that has uh, higher performance or, or better performance in certain areas like the 109. But with the Dora, just simply retaining energy uh, is uh, enough to win you the battle. So hopefully what this video shows is that if I let my aircraft or consciously put my aircraft into lag pursuit, just for short periods of time during an engagement, I can retain that energy uh, compared to the Dora. And here we are, I've just made it back to base and uh, pulled into the brake here. So I'd just like to thank you for watching the video and um, just a, a few things I'll point out here is, I know that lead lag pursuit uh, indicator in the, the, the bottom of the screen there, um, it may not have been perfect, my animation skills are really not that great, uh, but hopefully that helped explain what I was trying to talk about. And if you have any further comments or questions, uh, please leave it in the uh, comments below. And I'll probably do some more videos along these lines of some basic uh, fighter combat techniques or tactics and stuff like that. And uh, uh, that might include even uh, the landing I'm just doing here is a, a break approach for those of you that haven't seen it before. It's my preferred method of landing. I do it just about every single time, uh, unless I've got a severely damaged aircraft. Anyway, thanks again so much for watching. I appreciate your time and uh, have a good day.